This is Sky News at 7, our top stories. Police seek three men over a cowardly acid attack in Worcester that's left a three-year-old boy with burns to his face and arm. The Brexit secretary turns up the pressure on the European Union as the party splits deepen over the risks of a no-deal departure. Challenges too for the Labour leader as a showdown looms over new anti-Semitism rules. 11 people shot dead in an ambush attack in South Africa. The convoy away from carnage. Hundreds of White Helmet volunteers and their families are evacuated from Syria. <laughs> Jamming from space, the astronauts who got fans dancing back on Earth. And Molinari's major, Italy's Francesco Molinari, wins the Open. We'll have more on that in Sportsline at half past. Very good evening to you. Police in Worcester are tonight hunting for three men that they want to talk to over a suspected acid attack that shocked the community. A three-year-old boy was left with burns to his face and arm after the incident, which saw a liquid either thrown or sprayed at him as he sat in his pushchair. Well, it all happened yesterday afternoon at the Home Bargains store on the Shrub Hill Retail Park in Tallow Hill. Sky's Fraser Maud reports. Open again after what's been described as an act of pure evil took place inside. To should contact them immediately. Fraser Maud, Sky News, Worcester. The new Brexit secretary has issued an ultimatum to Brussels. Agree a trade deal or the UK won't pay a £39 billion divorce bill. Well, Dominic Raab, who replaced David Davis earlier on this month, has also accused the European Union of irresponsibly ramping up pressure over the negotiations. But it's got many on both sides of the channel believing that a no-deal scenario could well be the most likely outcome. Our political correspondent, Lewis Goodall, has this report. Remember this. I've said before, I've said on many occasions, that no deal is better than a bad deal for Britain. To minimise any economic damage of Brexit, whilst minimising the political damage that a betrayal would incur. The problem after this week is that, ironically enough, we might get both. Lewis Goodall, Sky News, Westminster. And that story is likely to feature in tomorrow's papers. We'll be taking a first look at those in the press preview tonight at 10.30 with Fleet Street Fox and Daily Mirror columnist Susie Boniface and the deputy political editor of the HuffPost UK, Owen Bennett. Now, Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn is calling on some of his colleagues to postpone a party showdown on anti-Semitism rules. Louise Ellman and Ruth Smith are due to submit an emergency motion to a meeting of the Parliamentary Party tomorrow, calling on it to adopt the full international definition of anti-Semitism. But as Nick Martin now reports, Mr Corbyn wants to give his colleagues more time to debate the issue. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn is staring down the barrel of a serious revolt from within his own party as accusations of anti-Semitism grow louder and louder. And there is absolutely no sign of any side being willing to back down. Nick Martin, Sky News. Many of the evacuated Syrian rescue workers, known as the White Helmets, are bound for Britain after they were evacuated from Syria. Around 422 people have been brought out through the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights before being taken to Jordan for now. Well, it's the first time that Israel has intervened in the Syrian war in this way, and the country's military says it acted on a request from Europe and the United States. Sky's Middle East editor, Alex Rossi, has sent the latest from Jerusalem. It was an international mercy mission to rescue the rescuers and make it are still stuck inside Syria. Alex Rossi, Sky News, Jerusalem. Well, let's take a look at some of the day's other news stories now. And a man from South London has been charged with a terrorism offence. 43-year-old Ravi Mendis was arrested on Friday on suspicion of possessing an offensive weapon and threats to kill people. He'll appear at Westminster Magistrates Court tomorrow. Eleven taxi drivers have been shot dead after attending a funeral in South Africa. Four others were critically injured after gunmen targeted a minibus carrying the group on Saturday evening. The drivers, who were members of the Gortain Taxi Association, were returning to Johannesburg from the service where they were ambushed. Well, the police have said that four are critically injured and they've been taken to unnamed hospitals. Over 250 bullets have been fired into a vehicle. You can be sure 
that whoever organized this doesn't want any loose ends. So if there was uh, any hitman hired for this, and that is what the suspicion is. Um, so if there's anybody that uh, is unharmed, and we know two people are, the police are protecting them, trying to guarantee their safety for the moment. And people have been killed and more than a dozen more wounded in a suicide attack at Kabul International Airport. The attack occurred just as the country's vice president, Rashid Dostum, was leaving the airport. He managed to escape the attack unharmed. Four British men have been arrested in Ibiza after a woman was allegedly raped on the Spanish island. Police say the 29-year-old, who's from the UK, claims she was drugged and sexually assaulted after meeting the men at a bar in the popular tourist hotspot in San Antonio. Two of the men, aged 21 and 29, have now been released on bail as investigations continue. For crime novel lovers, it's the literary highlight of the year. The annual crime writing festival is taking place in Harrogate in Yorkshire. Now, it's a chance for fans of the genre to rub shoulders with the likes of Jack Reacher creator Lee Child, who chairs the festival, as well as other celebrity authors. Guys, James Matthews got lucky and went along. As crime scenes go, this is pretty big. Bodies everywhere you look in a fast-moving episode of murder, mayhem and marketing genius of the fear phenomenon that grips us ever tighter. James Matthews, Sky News. You're watching Sky News coming up. The unique collaboration bringing otherworldly beats into orbit. Welcome back. Now, electro music group Kraftwerk really made the grave with their latest collaboration. They launched into a duet with astronaut Alexander Gerst, who joined their Stuttgart concert from the International Space Station. He performed a duet with the song Space Lab, and Sky's Lorna Shaddock has the latest on this out of this world gig. <laughs> the music of the spheres. Kraftwerk are known for pushing the boundaries with their performances, but even their most ardent fans didn't expect this. And here on Earth. Lena <laughs> Shaddock, Sky News. Now, it's Prince George's fifth birthday today, and to mark the occasion, his parents have issued a picture of him with a big, big smile. This photo here was taken earlier on this month in the garden of Clarence House, with George wearing a smart white shirt with blue stitching. The future king has also been enjoying the day with his mum and dad, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, and his siblings. They do like to issue the photographs for special occasions like this, but in fact we've seen a fair bit of Prince George recently compared to in previous years. We've had um, his brother's christening, of course, the other week, and, uh, and several other family engagements like the Trooping the Colour where they were all on the balcony. So we've always been a little bit spoiled in recent weeks. You have to remember that he is the future king, you know, he's heir to the throne, so there's always going to be a huge public interest in George more so than for his siblings, obviously Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. Um, and that's why they recognise this, I think, and they put out a photograph of him every year. Um, and, that, you know, I'm sure when the time is right, they'll be explaining to him why people are showing a particular interest in him and why he is going to be a public figure. Happy birthday, Prince George. Now let's get a check on the all-important weather forecast. The weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways. England and Wales will be mostly fine tomorrow, while Scotland, Northern Ireland and Ireland will see outbreaks of rain spreading south. Before then, though, most places will be fine throughout the evening, but northwest Scotland will have some patchy rain. The northeast may see the odd shower. Western parts of Northern Ireland and the northwestern halves of Scotland and Ireland will see outbreaks of rain overnight, whilst counties around the Scottish border will also have a scattering of heavy showers. It will be pretty muggy for most, cooler and fresher in the far north.